Hello, and welcome to the premiere episode of the Play Stamp Here Show. My name is Greg, and I'll be your host. This is going to be a long format video channel about stamp collecting, philately, postal history, and the USPS. I didn't really know how to start this channel. I have a lot of ideas for, for different things, but I just felt like I need to, need to do an introduction video to kind of tell you guys where I'm at with my collection and some of my short and long-term goals and kind of a brief overview mm -hmm. of where the channel is going to be going. And then that way I'll make a whole bunch of mistakes in this video and be able to move forward from there. So I hope you like it. Some of these videos are going to be, you know, between 20 and 60 minutes long. I apologize if you're not into long format, but I, it's been something that I've been looking for on YouTube and haven't been able to find a lot of. So here we go. I am a retired mailman. I used to be a rural mail carrier for a number of years. I bought my own mail truck when I got my own route. It's one of these actually on my shirt. It's the AM General 1984 FJ8C known in postal circles as a half ton. Delivered a lot of Amazon packages and mail out of this thing for a number of years. I recently sold it when we moved to Idaho. Um, just wasn't going to fit in the garage and I didn't want to sit outside collecting rust. I kind of miss it, to be honest. We had a lot of good adventures together. I have been collecting stamps um, off and on since I was nine. I took about a 20 year break when I became a father. Um, and I picked up the hobby again when my youngest was a teenager about five or six years ago. When I got back into the hobby, 2016, 2017, I kind of set a goal for myself that I wanted to collect everything from 1920 to 2020 used off paper from just the general postage stamps put out by the United States. I thought this was a reasonable goal. There aren't a lot of really high priced, scarce issues in that range. It was a nice round number of 100 years. And in 1920, there was a set of three stamps that came out. The tercentary anniversary of the Mayflower, you know, 1620 to 1920. It was Scott's um, 548, 49, and 50. And this was a one, two, and five cent stamp celebrating the Mayflower. Previous to getting back into the hobby, my main interest was doing family history research. Uh, it was something that I could do in little spurts and didn't take as much um, space as my stamp collecting does. And it was just something, once you have kids, I got more interested in you know where I came from. And so I've done a lot of research on my ancestry and I have at least eight people that came over on the Mayflower in my direct um, ancestral line. So to kind of transition from the work on my family tree to working on my stamp albums, I thought it would be really cool to start with a stamp that might have some of my ancestors on it. Um, I haven't been able to find another direct ancestor on a U.S. postage stamp yet, but there's a safe bet that some of those pilgrims coming out of that ship were one of my ancestors. So I thought that was kind of a fitting way to start the hobby. And again, you avoid all the like coil waste stamps from the Washington Franklins and stuff. Um, and other issues where there's only like 86 known or three known to exist. So that's just out of my price range. And I'm a gotta catch them all kind of collector. So to try to get every single stamp that comes out between 1920 to present day, basically, that seemed more of a obtainable goal than trying to collect like a whole set of the United States poacher stamps, which has only been done like what, twice by people who have a lot more money than I do. So that's kind of my short term goal. I hit kind of a snag when I was dealing with the self-adhesive stamps. So I focused primarily on the water activated gum stamps or what just old fashioned stamps. So right now I have a fairly complete collection, at least through the thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, and eighties. But like I said, I hit kind of a brick wall with the self-adhesives because the, the process of getting them off paper is so time consuming. I decided to put those on hold. So as I was going through mixtures of stamps, looking for stamps I needed, I just kept putting self-adhesive stamps like into coffee cans or a Ziploc bag. But now I've kind of reached the point where I'm ready to deal with those. So one of the first things I want to do with this channel, and it's going to be kind of a, a series of video, videos that we're going to be doing, is I'm going to be taking the stamps in these two tubs here. These are all self-adhesive stamps just thousands and thousands of self-adhesive stamps that I've 
separated by year that they're printed on. Every stamp starting in 1995 has a little date on them. So as I went through all my stamps um, in those coffee cans, I would separate them by year, 95, 96, 97, 98, and so on to 2022. And then I put them into bags, like this is all the 2007 stamps. And then when we get to those in the video series, we're going to be going year by year, basically going through the entire U.S. stamp program from the last 25 years or so, because I want to do an album fill series. And what that means is I went through my my albums and I took out all of the self-adhesive stamps I already had in there. There's a lot of the earlier ones you can get off for pretty easily. But I just went through and I pulled them all out and added them to those mix, mixes down there. And I want to do what I've seen some YouTubers do um, with coins. Like they would take an album like this, for example. This is just a Whitman album. But they would they would buy a newer looking album than this. But they would go through, they would buy banker boxes of nickels, like, or pennies or dimes or whatever. And they would go through just hundreds and hundreds of rolls of coins, trying to find coins that they're looking for to fill these albums. But the reason why I'm doing that is because, and we're going to be going through those um, and filling my album up as much as possible. Because right now, like I said, it's a blank slate. No self-adhesive stamps in there at all. So it's going to go issue by issue and try to fill my remaining two and a half albums with those self-adhesive stamps. And then once that's finished, I'll have a really good idea of which stamps I'm missing. Because right now, when I'm shopping for stamps online, I'll see something like, oh, I need that stamp, and then I'll buy it. And then in a mixture of like, you know, a pound of U.S. stamps or just a big bag of stamps at a thrift shop. But then, you know, later on, I'll realize I have that stamp already just in one of those in one of those bags. So um, I've been I have four or five stubs like tubs like this one that say stamps on, and they are just full of hundreds of thousands of stamps that I have in Ziploc bags, garbage bags, shopping bags, boxes, coffee cans that I've got from thrift shops, from eBay auctions, from collectors, estate sales, um, garage sales, whatever. Uh, so once I get those self-adhesive stamps all on my album, then I can complete my checklist of which ones I need. And then we're going to take that and start going through all these mixtures of stamps, looking for neat little pieces and also stamps to fill my collection. So hopefully my next episode will be on, these are just the self pieces before 1995. These don't have dates on them for the most part, but there are about 24 stamps that came out between 1974 and 1994 by the USPS with varying degrees of success, but we're just going to basically walk through all 24 issues, find a suitable copy, and if it needs to be soaked off paper or, or pulled off paper, we're going to do that and then put it into my album. So that's kind of the, the near future. There's a couple of areas that I think I could continue to research and collect for decades to come. But one thing that I've really started to enjoy is slogan cancels. Now what slogan cancels are, I'm going to put these up on the computer screen because you won't be able to see these very well. And these are called other things. Um, they can be called pictorial cancels, motto cancels. Um, I know there's some overlap there. I really like these slogan cancels because for one thing, there's a good variety of them. Some of them are national campaigns that last for decades. Some are very particularly localized for a short period of time. I've been trying to avoid ones that I think are kind of homemade, if that makes sense. So for the most part, I look for these rectangles with the seven bars going out the side. And then from there, I can kind of tell some of the official, like modern ones. From what I can tell, there's, like I said, there's some, some national campaigns like this one, which is Pray for Peace. Um, this one, which is always use zip code. You see that a lot. And that was kind of mandatory for bulk mailers to use for a long time. Uh, please mail early for Christmas. There's some older ones like airmail saves time. Um, I'm going to have these all up on the screen. But then you get to be some pretty 
specific ones. Like here's one for New York Philharmonic Homecoming Week, October 12th through 19th, 1959. And here's one for a National Cultural Center telecast on November 29th, 1962. Now, this is from November 14th, 1962 in Dallas, Texas is where this was mailed from. And what the National Cultural Center telecast basically was, was JFK and Jackie O and a bunch of like over a hundred other dignitaries like President Eisenhower and a bunch of others, they were kind of christening like the National Center for the Arts, I think. And this was mailed from Dallas just a little bit over a year before JFK was assassinated in Dallas. And that cultural center has hence, since been renamed the Kennedy Performing Arts Center in his honor. But this was basically a closed circuit um, broadcast that they did from Washington, like as a fundraiser. It'd be kind of like if you went to go see a concert inside a movie theater, but it was like a live event, but you paid to go sit in a cinema to watch a concert that was somewhere else. It was kind of like that. There's only like 150,000 people that attended, you know, various different places to watch this thing. But this is, and I don't know how national this was, but this was for a very specific date for not very people. I thought that was kind of cool. The way I'm kind of seeing this right now is about four different ways you can collect these. And this is true for a lot of different ways to collect stamps. You can collect them on cover like this. You get the return address, the where it was headed, the postmark, the the full slogan cancel and the stamp. Any other like franking or marks that might be on here. The second way to collect them would be all these tabs. Basically all it is is the top part of the envelope that has all that information on there. This one's give to the Red Cross War Fund. There's a lot of different Red Cross ones with a three cent pregnancy on there. This is from Detroit, Michigan in March of 1946. But these tabs, they have all that relevant information. They got the postmark, they got the slogan canceled, they got the stamp. And this one actually has some hinge marks on the back. Someone had this in an album. I thought that was kind of cool. So I got a bunch of these. I like finding these in boxes of stamps. And here's another one from 1991. This is um, Support Mental Health Week. But same concept. Postmark, slogan, cancel, stamp. So that's another way to, to collect. And that's kind of how I wanted to do it for a while, just because it saves a lot of space. But I can see how most people would consider covers to be ideal. The next way would be to have it on a piece of paper, but with the full um, slogan cancel on it. This one says, Roseville, California, all America city. This is a six cent stamp. And this appears to not have any other stamps on to the left of it. So this is probably a first class letter. And the first class rate was only six cents from 1968 to 1971. And this plant for more beautiful cities came out in 1969. So this probably was mailed sometime 1969, 1970. And Roseville, California is part of the greater Sacramento metropolitan area. My wife's parents actually lived in Roseville for a while. With the urban sprawl and everything, sprawl and everything Roseville City is like 141,000 people now. But back in 1970, there was only 18,000 people living there. So this was a pretty small town. Um, and I'm assuming they only had one post office in 1970. So this was a local slogan cancel, just kind of celebrating that, hey, we were recognized for being in an all-America city. Um, here's another one on piece. This one doesn't have the full design. I found both of these, the Roseville and this one, um, just last week, actually. I was kind of peeking through one of those bags of stamps. So this one just says, countdown to 99, and it says Browns or Cleveland Browns. First game, August 21st, 1999. The Cleveland um, NFL franchise left the city back in like 1994, 1995 and went to Baltimore where it became the Baltimore Ravens, but they got a team back in 1999. So this is the return of NFL football to Cleveland, which was a pretty big deal. And this, I don't know if this is like from the Cleveland Browns organization to like season ticket holders and fans, like to let them know like they're back and this is, you know, come buy a ticket and give us money. Or if this was like a Cleveland wide um, slogan cancel. This one doesn't have the little bars on the side, um, but they played the Minnesota Vikings um, at home on August 21st, 1999. And this is just a little piece of history telling the people in the area that they're back. So I thought that was cool. So here's another one. This has 
Star Trek Enterprise going over Mount Rushmore. The way I see these things, it's kind of a 20th century version of fancy cancels. If you collect classic U.S. stamps, there's a lot of, well, fancy cancels that people would make like out of a cork or something. It would be a star or a bullseye or a donkey or a bat or, or something that some clever clerk before there was all these regulations who was probably bored, you know, sat there and carved out something on a potato or a cork or a piece of wood and would just dip that in ink and, you know, cancel the letters with it. Fourth way to collect them is just on a stamp off paper. And usually you only get a partial design, but that kind of adds the fun, like to figure out what slogan cancel this is. I've seen this a few times. I'm pretty sure it says give to the United Way and it has like the United Way symbol on it. So it just adds another layer. And here's another one on paper, Billy Haley's stamp. The slogan cancel says Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Cleveland Museum or World Museum, something like that. Collect them partially on just the stamp or, you know, partially or fully on a piece of paper or you could collect one of these tabs, like I was saying, or on cover. It's kind of four different ways you could amass a um, slogan cancel collection. So anyway, the other thing that I've recently started collecting but I really enjoy. This is a stock book I got. Um, it's made in West Germany in the 80s. I came up with a new philatelic term, TM, called um, TORES, T-O-R-E-S. And it just, it's an acronym for top right envelope statement. Generally, it's usually says like place stamp here. And so I'm going to try to scan these and put them on, on the screen as well. Basically, it's anything that's underneath the stamp. And it's kind of directions on where to put the stamp because you're supposed to put the stamp in the upper right corner in the USA. And there's a lot of reason for that. There's sorting machines that can detect the tagging on a stamp and automatically flip or turn or invert that envelope so that the stamp is in a proper position to be canceled. I started collecting these because I was looking for a channel name. This is where I'm getting the channel name from in case anybody's wondering. My favorite ones are these ones that have like the fake perforations around them. I'm finding these ones recently with dashes around the slogan. I got over 600 of these things so far. Like here's a bunch on like red or purple ink. And here's some blue and purple ink ones with different fonts. And then here's like some brown and green ones. And then these ones over here, they don't have like a box around them. And then there's some with pink paper. There's some with like yellow or orange or brown paper. Uh, blue paper, green paper. These all say place stamp here. These are black ink on white paper. There's more of those over here. This one I call the Michael Bay. Uh, is, so it's like, <sighs> these are from postcards, just place stamp here. These ones say place stamp here, but they also say the post office will not deliver a mail without postage. There's a few different varieties of that statement that are on here, but here's more of those like on colored paper with certain themes. Here's some more of those. Here's some that say place stamp here. They're on postcards up here or, or this finger. And most of these say like one cent domestic, two cent foreign. Um, one says place stamp here, domestic Cuba, canal zone, Hawaii, Mexico, Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Canada, one cent, foreign, two cents. These ones, amount of postage besides the ones over here. Like place one cent stamp here, place three cent stamp here, place six cent stamp here. One that said 19 cents. These ones, they add the word postage, like place postage stamp here. These ones all say please place stamp here. And some of them say thank you. It's very polite. Call these voids. They're just like empty squares where the stamp would go. These ones I love for the simplicity. They just say stamp. This one right here is my first foreign language one that says silo, which I think is Spanish or Portuguese for stamp. Um, here's some more postcard ones that just say like the UPC code for the postcard or whatever. Then you get into place postage here. So place stamp here. There's a bunch of those. And there's a few like specific ones like place first class postage, bulk rate, third or fourth class. These ones, they all say a fix, a fix stamp, um, fix postage. These ones all say postage required for delivery. Some of these just say place or attached postage. This is a bunch of just weird ones. It doesn't even say place stamp here. It just says post office will not deliver without proper postage. Or These ones all say put stamp here. Again, with that, that little message warning. Put stamp here's with the warning. 
Here's some more on colored paper. Um, these ones appear to say put stamp here instead of place stamp here. These ones all say put stamp here. These ones are from charities. Your stamp adds to your gift or your stamp helps a crippled child or helps the handicapped. Thank you. So these ones I think are postage, to be honest. It's kind of like a bulk rate mail or like a nonprofit stamp. I think it's for a railroad service and for railroad business. And then these are just the, um, I think a lot of these from like the IRS or like the Department of Agriculture or something. There's this like form numbers and envelope numbers and just random letters and numbers on there. There's some of them are from railroads and businesses, but anyway, I think it's fun to collect these. It, like I said, it encourages me to soak stamps off paper. That's hopefully something that I'm going to be collecting for a while as well. So anyway, I think that's about it. Please let me know if you like this video. I'm hoping they only get better from here. If you want to contact me, like say you're soaking some stamps and you want to send me some of those place stamp here's, you can write to me. I mean, this is a show about mail and stamps. A P.O. Box set up for that. It's um, P.O. Box 921, Twin Falls, Idaho, 83303-0921. I'll put that up on the screen and maybe in the comments below. I am at place stamp here on Twitter. I'm at place stamp here show on just about every other social media out there. Fairly active on Twitter, just within the stamp community. Um, wear my, my philatelic goggles when I'm on Twitter, like I'm in my bubble. Like I just talk about stamps. And if you want to join me, that's where I'm at. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. See you soon. Bye.